let's look at the integration property and the integration property is similar to the, uh, the I mean the differentiation property the differentiation property is similar to the integration property let's see if you have a, a inductance and if you know the Laplace transform of the current and you're trying to find the Laplace transform of the voltage and in that case we know the voltage for inductance is equal to L D I D T assuming V and I and they are following the passive sign convention and so in that case you can find the uh, the Laplace Laplace transform of the voltage of inductance without really doing the actual derivation if you use the property of this one and similarly if you want if you know the uh, capacitor voltage uh, transform and we know the current is equal C D V D T for the capacitance and in that case you can find the um, um, the capacitor current by using this uh, property so let's look at how this property is derived uh, hopefully they're not too difficult so let's see if we know the Laplace transform of FT FT could be any time domain function very general and we uh, do the Laplace transform um, of the uh, df dt and of course this is a function of time so we're still utilizing the uh, we're still utilizing the um, the definition of the Laplace transform which is df t dt and e2 minus st so this is the function right? e2 minus st dt actually right off the bat the dt is cancelled right so we can we can write this one here is e2 minus uh, e2 um, the uh, integration from 0 minus to infinity and the df uh, dft times e2 minus st let me kind of switch the the position so that we don't confuse ourselves too much e2 minus at the d f t right so in this case we're going to use the chain rule again and the chain rule remember is x dy or y dx doesn't really matter which one you you you, you call x dy but here let's see at x dy is equal dxy xy minus y dx so in this case, let's see x dy. You choose you think this as y and this as x, right? So we apply this chain rule. That's going to be equal to dxy integration, and that becomes xy. So we just evaluate xy, which is e2 minus st times ft. We evaluate that t at equal zero minus to the infinity, right? and then minus 0 minus to infinity x dy x dy becomes uh, the y dx I'm sorry y is ft dx so d e2 minus st is going to be equal to minus s e2 minus st dt right so in this case we have uh, minus s times e2 minus st dt and again here since we know uh, the um, the uh, s is I mean it's, it's not a function of a t so we integrate with respect to the time so therefore we can move this s from the integrand to outside this integral and in that case let's see the first um, uh, let's just re, uh, re rewrite the first term also evaluate the first term so that it give, give me uh, these e2 minus infinity s times infinity right ft uh, f infinity so because of t equal infinity we should replace by infinity and minus the e2 minus s times zero so zero minus for the i uh, for the uh, exponential function is the same as uh, this uh, zero uh, times s so then times f zero minus and and in this case i will have the negative s mode outside so let me keep that negative s 0 minus to infinity 
and ft times e2 minus st dt. And the first here, I should close this the brackets here. So in this case, this for this one is one, right? So this one is the, whatever value is. So this term here is zero because this term e2 minus s times infinity, we assume s is positive. It has a, has a positive real part. The the sigma plus j omega sigma is positive. Okay, so. In this case, uh, since the negative and negative will be canceled for this, so we have, and also we recognize this one here is Fs, right? So this is just a Laplace transform of Ft. So that's the Fs. So we have S times Fs minus uh, the F0 minus. So this one we typically call the initial condition initial condition the initial condition of let's say the inductor current right so if you have a current that's the initial condition vl time uh, so the the induction maybe maybe it was conducting uh current and right at a t uh equal to zero slightly left to that slightly before that t equal to zero right uh so let's look at maybe on the more simple example here is, let's see if we have inductance. So we have L and so this is the uh, IT, right? So this is gonna be VT. We know the, we know the VT is gonna be equal L D I T D T, right? So let's see if we know the Laplace transform of I is, I S okay. The Laplace transform of the I T and also I T zero. Let's see, given I sub uh, zero minus. So we know the current when the, where whether the uh, what did the current value of the inductor what was was carrying at the uh, very beginning of the time. And in this case, we take the Laplace transform of V T. Let's see the V S is actually Laplace transform of V T. And in this case, based on this, um, let's say first we use the linearity property. So that's gonna be Laplace transform of dit dt, right? Um, and we know the uh, Laplace transform of dit dt using the differentiation property. We know that should be the s times the Laplace transform of time and the it, the time function. So in that case, we have L times S times the Laplace transform of IT, which is IS, by the way, minus the initial condition of this. So therefore we got uh, LS times the I sub S minus L I um, zero minus. Actually this is the, um, the uh, element constant for the inductance in Laplace domain. We're gonna look at the next lecture, uh, but this the you see how powerful this property gonna get you, right? So you don't need to do um, you don't need to to do uh, the uh, the calculations based on the definition all the time. You can utilize this property to do a lot of things. Okay, uh, uh, we'll move on to the translation properties.